Hello, so I'm actually going to record this video for anyone at Rutgers UBHC who wants to know how to create Zoom meeting or webinar links and registration. So through the uh, Zoom platform. So the first thing that you need to know is that it's going to be a lot easier if you go ahead and log in to your Rutgers Zoom account, which will be found at ruckers.zoom.us. Most people are fairly familiar with uh, how to access their account, um, but some of us may have not been using that very much during uh, the pandemic or before that. So um, this button right here, the third one down is gonna say sign in and it's gonna allow you to configure your existing Rutgers uh, Zoom account. And that's exactly what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. And it's gonna give some of my information here. My profile information will be things that are filled out for you. Uh, here's the two areas that you need. You need uh, meetings. And then if you plan on using webinars, uh, webinars is something that you'll need as well. Um, just so you know, not everyone has access to meetings and webinars. Um, you may need to request uh, help from Rutgers OIT. You can actually see their phone number in the top left of the screen, which is 833-OIT-HELP. So uh, you can give them a call. They'll be the ones giving uh, you access. It's not through Rutgers UBHC IT. It's through OIT at Rutgers. Okay, so they're gonna be the ones that give you access to webinars and meetings. I'm pretty sure almost 100% of people at UBHC have access to the meetings part. Um, so um, that I'm fairly sure about. So you're gonna wanna go to meetings and you're gonna wanna schedule a meeting over here on the right-hand side. That's how you're gonna create a new meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click schedule a meeting. Uh, if you are a office uh, admin, you can uh, schedule for someone else. Um, this is uh, an, another process that, that you need to do to be able to schedule for people. It's probably also something you'll need to ask OIT about. Um, but for now, let's just go down to topic. So um, test meeting we'll call it. Um, and you can go ahead and add a description if you'd like. Your participants will see that description if you send them uh, a registration link or just a regular Zoom meeting link. And if you click the calendar button here, you'll see that something will come up. It'll allow you to pick a date. So I'll pick August 17th. And we'll say that this is gonna start at 9 a.m. And it will last five hours, right? So uh, when, duration, um, just so you know, though, the, the duration is nice to add if you know the duration, but if you go over that time, it's not going to kick anyone out. It's not going to kick you out. Everyone will stay in the meeting. If you go over five hours, nothing's going to happen. It's just about how that looks and what it looks like inside your Zoom meeting. Um, just so you know, if you have two Zoom meetings that overlap each other, you could end up having problems. So. If you have two training dates, two meetings, two conferences, whatever it is, that just so happen to be at the same time on the same day, you might want to have someone else hosting that meeting. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you have overlap on meetings, trainings, or conferences, you might want someone else to be the host of that because 
you cannot host two Zooms at the same time. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can also make this a reoccurring meeting. Uh, if, you, if it's like a meeting that happens every week or every other week or training that happens more than once. And you can play around with the recurrences, repeating in how many days, uh, when to end it, uh, you know, whether it's a certain date or after a certain amount of occurrences, all that good stuff. You can play around with that. Uh, I won't show too much of that. Um, registration, you can just press, if you want registration for Zoom meetings, which is part of why I'm doing this video, um, you're gonna click on required. So that's all you have to do. I'm gonna show you a little bit more options um, on the back end of this, but when you're setting up the meeting and you want registration, you just have to make sure to check off this box that says required next to registration. Uh, meeting ID, generate automatically, that's fine. We don't need to select a template. Um, waiting rooms, always nice. I like to use waiting rooms, uh, but not everybody does. So you can click that off if you want to, um, but just keep that in mind. Um, and I don't usually, usually check off required authentication to join. Um, so this, this is just asking like, um, whether or not participants or hosts video will be on as they log in. I like to keep this off, um, so that people can turn their video on as they're logging in, as they're getting settled. So it's not immediately, uh, putting on your video, um, just gives you an extra 10 seconds to, um, to get set before and uh, you you will automatically have or manually have to click on uh, the ability to have your video turn on. So just keep that in mind. I like that as well. Um, I'm going to show these like hidden options here at the bottom just to talk about them really briefly. Um, so some people check off all allow participants to join at any time. Um, that's fine. I, I don't see much of a difference either way. Um, I use mute participants upon entry. I don't particularly like, especially for trainings or conferences, that individuals will immediately come on with their sound because they might be mid-conversation as they log into the Zoom. So I like to have mute participants upon entry. But if you're doing a smaller meeting where there's five of you, 10 of you, um, you can turn that off and you'd be okay. Um, breakout room pre-assigned. That's something that's, uh, you know, that's advanced. Um, you, you can absolutely do that if you know who your participants are gonna be, but it's not something that too many of us use in terms, in, at least in the training atmosphere. Um, automatically record meeting, also something I don't use too often. Approve or block uh, entry to users from specific regions, countries. Again, not something I use. Alternative host. This is something I use a decent amount. So I can set an alternative host to be my coworker. I can search them and their uh, name and email will come up. Um, so I actually use this a lot um, just in case something were to happen. I, I use all of my teammates um, so that uh, they can log in as an alternative host. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and save that. And now this is my test meeting. This is this is it. Um, so if I didn't use registration, this would just say Zoom link. But right here it says registration link. So if you go to copy invitation, you'll notice that it's actually kind of a message. It says you're invited to the Zoom. Here's the registration link. After registering, you will receive confirmation email containing information about Zoom meeting. So when you send this out to people, you can just copy meeting invitation and it says copy to clipboard. You can send that out via your, your email if you'd like to um, and as, as a reminder to all participants. But just so you know, uh, when you send out this registration link, people will be able to use that to register for the Zoom. Uh, let's take a look at the registration actually. Um, because we can play around with a few things. So obviously here we can see that there's zero registrants, but if there were any, we can view them at any point in time and we would have a list that populates here of all of our registrants. So um, let's take a look at registration options. 
uh, we're going to go ahead and click edit. So you, I usually just click automatically approve. So uh, this just means that every single person that registers is going to be automatically approved to join. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that for now. This is this will create a lot of noise in your in your mailbox depending on how many people are registering. If you click off send an email to host when someone's registers, uh, you're just going to get a lot of notifications. Especially if it's like more than twenty, you're just going to have email after email. Uh, so I don't typically use that. Um, close registration after event date. Yeah, sure, you could you could use that. That's no problem. Restrict number of registrants. So if you have a certain number of people that you want to attend this. Like, let's say you only want 20 people to be able to attend. You can set that at 20. Um, and there you go. Easy enough, right? Allow panelists and attendees to join from multiple voices. Sure, why not? Show uh, social share buttons on registration page. Sure, why not? Okay, so this is going to, this questions piece, these are going to be the questions that you ask of the people who are registering. These are the typical things that are checked off. The last name of the individual. Oh, I guess that's I guess that's it. Uh, so it would be last name of the individual. Um, I think it automatically asks first name. There's some automatic questions. Yeah, first name and email address are required. There we go. So first name, last name, and email address are the three things that are automatically going to be um, required to fill out when you add registration. Um, there are a whole bunch of other things that you can see here. You could add job title for them to fill out. Um, you could add custom questions. Uh, it can be short answer or single answer. Um, so yeah, there, there's just a bunch of different things you can do with that. Once you're done though, you can just hit save all and that will save for you. Um, email settings. This is about like who the email contact is for this uh, Zoom registration. If you want, you can edit this. And let's say you want it to, maybe you have a universal email address for your program. Um, you could put the universal email address for your program. So for example, ours is cceubhc.ruckers.edu. And I could put the center for continuing education. And it looks nice and professional. I save that. And so anybody who registers for this is going to see this email contact as, uh, you know, so, so this is going to be who they contact if they have any issues. Uh, you can do, I mean, branding, we don't touch too much. You could create polls ahead of time, um, but I won't go over that. Um, it's fairly easy. Um, just know, one thing to know, to know about polls. If you have multiple questions, let's see, we have two questions here. Untitled question one and untitled question two. And first poll. Okay, so when you launch this poll, inside of your Zoom meeting, both of these questions are going to be asked one after another. It's going to be like, okay, question one, and then question two. If you don't want that to be the case, and you have multiple polls that are in different locations of your training or your meeting, what you want to do is you want to create a second poll. So this one gets saved as first poll. You create a second one, and this is untitled for two. You save that. And so these you can launch at any point in time and your questions don't have to be back to back to back. So I know that might sound a little confusing now, but you can play around with that and you'll see exactly what I mean. How you get back to this meeting is that this is officially going to be listed inside of my meetings. So when I click on meetings at any point in time, I can see on Wednesday, August 17th, I have my test meeting. If I wanna go back here and take a look at how many people have registered, 
I just go back all the way to the bottom of this meeting and click view. And there's a, the, that's where all of my registrants are gonna be. Okay, so that is uh, setting up a Zoom meeting and setting up Zoom registration. I hope that was helpful and I will see all of you another time.